Hello and uh, welcome back to another segment of Terminating Low Voltage Cables. I'm Ron with Ideal and welcome to my shop and my channel. Hey, in this segment we are going to uh, terminate a Category 6 wire and put a Category 6 plug on the end of it uh, and uh, basically make up a patch cable uh, in the field. And when you look at Category 6 wire versus Category 5E, uh, it becomes a little bit more of a challenge to make sure we do this right because CAT6 is roughly 12 times better at reducing noise and cross-talking cabling than 5E is. So as that cable gets better, guess what our connections that we make have to get better and better too. And nothing in the standard says you can't make up your own cabling here. So uh, you, you'll see guys doing it all the time. Now I'm going to tell you like all these type of connections, if you ever want to get proficient at putting these on, you've got to go home with a box of connectors and a hunk of wire and put one on and cut it off and again put one on and cut it off and sometime later you'll be down to a couple minutes in putting on these monitor plugs. Well first of all let's take a look at a close up of the mod plug itself and I'll give you some of the ideas of what goes on as we go about terminating the cabling, what to look for when you buy your plugs. Here's a close-up of the Category 6 uh, three-piece modular plug that we're going to put on a piece of Category 6 wire. Now these can be used both on solid or stranded Category uh, 6 wires. And when you look at them, we have a body itself uh, that holds uh, the wires in these other two parts. And these other two parts, this is called a uh, sled. It kind of looks like a little bit of like a dumbbell kind of thing. Uh, that helps hold the wires in place and we also have another little device here uh, we call a liner that has kind of a unique shape to it and it corresponds to a, a shape inside the uh, modular plug so it makes sure everything's lined up nice uh, tight together and there are little slots in the top of this little liner that allow the pins in the plug to actually pass through and make a connection on the conductors themselves and so when we get done we're looking for a mod plug that looks a little like this one does, where the outer jacket, that blue outer jacket, is all the way inside the plug. There is a plastic, again, strain relief that gets driven down on top of the, uh, the jacketing itself that, again, is a strain relief. The, uh, the uh, sled and the liner are fully seated inside, and you can see that on the side of the mod plug. You'll notice the pins are directly over the top of the liner. I can look at the end of the wire here and see all the conductors through the clear front, which tells me that, uh, the, that that's good as well. And I also want to look at one last thing is I want to look at the pins. As tools wear out, they may not crimp all the pins evenly. And you want to make sure that they're all down below the body of the side of the plug itself. And right now, when I blew up a brand new one, they're a little bit above it. So, uh, there's, uh, so that's what we're looking for. And we're going to show you how to terminate this uh, in the next segment. I'm going to go ahead and put a uh, Category 6 plug, three-part plug, on a piece of Category 6 a or 6 wire for you here. And one of the first things we'll need to do is to remove some of this jacketing. So when you do this, one inch is not near enough. Two inches actually works out to be just about right. Three or four inches is just a bunch of more on twists you're going to have to do. So we make sure we uh, uh, put a little bit of cable hanging out here about two inches, go around a couple times with a stripping tool. Stripping tool, we just really want to score and pop and break that jacketing like that. All this cable has what's referred to as nylon ribbon cord. We cut that out of there as well. And then we'll find that each of the pairs is naturally laying someplace around the perimeter of the cable. And I fold them into four little corners like this. And now I need to remove this little separator, and uh, that helps keep the wires in the right spots in the cable. And I'm going to press it down and make sure I don't cut the conductors and snip it out there as close to the uh, jacketing as I can. Now, depending on if you're doing 5CJA or B or whatever wiring scheme you're looking at, uh, if we were doing a B, the orange and the brown should be on the left and the right when I look at it when I get done. And one of the parts of this uh, CAT6 uh, plug is a device, uh, we call it a, a sled. Uh, it kind of looks like a little dumbbell, <laughs> to be true with you and it slides over those two pairs and slides all the way down to the jacketing and it has a slot in the middle in the top here and in the bottom back here that allows the blue pair to lay flat uh, on the top and the green on the bottom so that's what the, the, the little sled device is. Now we need to untwist these pairs. Now uh, we, when we untwist these pairs we need to make sure we untwist all the way down um, don't want to twist nothing inside the jacketing. Uh, the standards will uh, tell us that we have to leave no more than a half inch untwisted per pair 
uh, when we make a connection up. And uh, again, you can see that this Cattery 6 wire is twisted pretty good and uh, quite a bit more than a 5E. And then also it has a little bit larger con uh, conductor in it in a, in a 23 gauge uh, conductor. And you wouldn't think that a uh, little bit of difference in the gauge size makes it hard, much harder to uh, do this job than it can be. Now we got to pick again A or B and we're in the B format that's what we're going for here. So we're going to go left to right, uh, white, orange, and orange. The third conductor in that sequence is white, green. And I'm going to bring that kind of up through the bottom so it's in that slot in the bottom. Now the blue and white blue come down to the top and again the sequence goes white, orange, then orange, white, green, then blue, white, green, or white, blue, then green, and the green is again laying in that slot in the bottom and then white, brown, brown, and that's the proper sequence for us. Now the next thing we get to do is get these uh, laying as tight as we can. And I'm going to push them up against the jacketing like that and I'm going to bring those a little closer and fold them out like that. And I'm going to take my thumb and forefinger and pull them out like that, maybe give them a little bit of a twist. And I'm trying to get these conductors laying as tight and as flat as I can get them. And I've noticed my, my uh, white, blue, and blue are not cooperating with me here, so I'm going to rearrange those so that they are. And it, the, the key here is to make sure everything's nice, tight, and flat, and uh, twist it all the way down to the uh, sled device. There we go. Now, once I got them like that, I need to trim them, and I'm going to cut them at a, a little bit of an angle here. And when I cut them a little bit of an angle, that allows me to take the next device in the plug and insert them one at a time in this little uh, liner device, we call it. And it slides over the conductors. You can see it slid over the wires and uh, it holds them right in place. And the little liner has got little slots on the top of it that allow the pins in the connector itself to uh, make connection on the individual conductors and we need to just make sure that these are pushed tightly up against each other. All right, And they are. And then I'm going to go ahead and take a pair of snips and cut the wires flush to the front of that little liner device. Now when we insert the plug, the, this into the plug itself, in this case white orange is on our left, when we insert this in here the pins are facing you. So white orange is on your left, pins are facing us. And we should be able to slide this inside the plug and kind of, kind of work it back and forth like that. And what I'm looking for here is the blue uh, jacketing on the side here is all the way through and underneath that back frame leaf. You can see on the sides here that the liner is fully underneath the pins and, 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 and all the way through the back end here. And we can also see the conductors through the very front of the plug and that again tells me this is ready to be crimped. Now, when I go to crimp this, I utilize usually a ratcheting style crimping tool. And the reason I like the ratcheting style here is because I know the pins are fully seated if I've used one of these, because the tool will not release until it is squeezed all the way down and then it releases. So uh, I'm very simply going to insert the connector in the front of the tool. And again, I want to make sure everything's bottom out in there. Good. And then I'm going to squeeze this tool until it releases. And it did. And now I can remove that from the tool. And there's a properly terminated CAT6 plug. Uh, again, strain relief is all the way down. The wires are all the way through the sides. I can make sure the liner's all the way through here. I can see all the conductors through the clear front of the plug as well. And um, as I said, it's a properly terminated CAT6 uh, plug. And if we were doing a, a patch cord, we would do the exact same thing on the other side. And um, there you have it. Uh, thanks for coming to another segment. Uh, I'm Ron with Ideal, and uh, you know we'll see you next time.